In 2022, I posted four videos. That's not great. <laughs> There's 2,080 hours in every year, so that seems like plenty of time to make more videos. So, what happened? <laughs> I spent 29.96% of all of 2022 just watching a movie. Last January, I was talking to my friend Joey, and he mentioned something along the lines of, wouldn't it be funny if you watched a movie for every day in 2022? I guess that's how all of this started. My goal was 365 movies before December 31st, and if you read the title, you know I did just that. I tracked and reviewed all of these over on Letterboxd, so if you want to go follow me there, go for it. My 2022 in review will be linked down below, but here's some notable standouts. When looking at my highest rated new releases, the list still seems pretty accurate to my feelings on them today. In hindsight, Where the Crawdad Sings might be knocked down to a 3.5 or 4 stars, definitely below Fableman's or Top Gun Maverick. I watched The Amazing Spider-Man six separate times this year. It blows my mind that I haven't given it its own dedicated video yet, but what I will say is that I've been pretty much obsessing about this film since seeing it in theaters in 2012. It's the first DVD that I bought in late 2012 and eventually kicked off my Blu-ray collection. If you get me started about this film, I'll talk about it for hours. I think it's interesting how 63% of films I watched were films I had already seen before, and 9% take up 2022 releases. I think a general goal for 2023 is just going to theaters more and watching new films. Films like The Menu, The Whale, Don't Worry Darling, Babylon, Weird, Tar, The Bad Guys, Bones and All, and Enter Galactic are all new films that I was meaning to watch but ended up missing out on. Hello and welcome to the first ever Uncle Awards. I'm your host, Uncle Anz. Today we've gathered here to shed some light on 15 films that I watched this year, giving them a ranking across five different categories. Film is one of the largest forms of entertainment, having the largest age demographic. In the case of films that you have heard of, three immediately jump to mind. On the 5th of April, I watched Inception for the first time. I kind of avoided this film for years before this just based on how confusing everyone told me it was. I had always assumed it was just one of those movies that was so unnecessarily complicated and vague that in the end it could mean anything you wanted because the film was too scared to develop its own voice. I was wrong. I watched Inception four times this year, each time making me speechless. The film itself has a very simple premise with easy-to-understand rules. Christopher Nolan created an incredible world with incredible shots, set design, character motivation, and rules to the seemingly bullshit science at play. You don't need me to tell you that the cast is fantastic. You don't need me to tell you that it seems to get better every watch. And you don't need me to tell you about the impact and brilliance of the ending. The Secret Life of Walter Mitty is a masterpiece in shot composition and color. The use of blue and red, and what it represents is nothing short of beautiful. Blue representing the known world, and red representing the unknown world. The shots shift from warm to cold based on the feelings Walter is portraying. The film is about a man who feels like a nobody, someone who is just trying to get through each day, and his journey to find himself. The life of Pi is stunning. You know this, I know this. Look at this shot, this shot, or this shot. The story is about a boy named Pi and his journey as a castaway with his tiger, Richard Parker. The CGI is like nothing I've ever seen before. And now we have the top three movies that you might have heard of. Marcel the Shell just might be the... Is it even focused? It's totally not focused. Marcel the Shell just might be the best movie I've ever seen. I remember sitting in a theater chair when I first saw the trailer for it. I leaned over to my friend Brayden and said, That looks like it's about to be the greatest movie of all time. I was right. I bought digital and physical copies of the film, I have this little guy on my desk, and my original ticket is in the back of my phone case. It's the most human film I've ever seen. Go tweet me a picture of you watching it, I love this film and just want to talk about it with someone. <laughs> You might have heard of the book, The Boy, the Mole, the Fox, and the Horse. I love and I've read this book several times over the past few years. I found out there was a film and I instantly dropped everything to go watch it. The film is just real. It's hard to explain what I mean. It's so simple and just reassures you that there will always be light at the end of the tunnel. You will be okay. <laughs> 
the 1966 Batman is only slightly worse than the Lego Batman movie. It feels so dated and cheesy in the best ways possible. The multiple villains are all really well used. The whole film is just so simple and enjoyable. I'm now so excited to share the top three films that you probably haven't heard of. This film is called The Wave in English, but it was originally a German film called Die Willy. Willy? Willy? Die Welle. What the fuck? It's a historical fiction film based on the social experiment called The Third Wave by Ron Jones. It tackles fascism and makes you think about the influence other people hold over us, especially ones with power. I would highly recommend this film just based on how interesting it is and how it leaves you thinking for days after. Chess is badass. You know this, I know this. Anyone who's good at chess is instantly cooler than anyone who doesn't know how to play. <laughs> Unless, of course, you stick things into your ass uh, to help you win. <laughs> Searching for Bobby Fischer follows a little boy who is instantly good at chess. The story follows the conflict between chess as a sport and chess for fun. The difference between chess in a park and in a chess competition, and the pressure that is put on such a young kid. I started playing chess because of this movie, and this little boy is the reason that I want to get better. I don't even know how to start talking about this film. It's so simplistic, the story is very minimal. Its purpose is to remind you to slow down and breathe, and that there will be calm at the end of the storm. It's such a beautiful day, does a perfect job pointing out the tiny things, reminding you that it really is a beautiful day. No day is promised. Today is a gift, and it's all we have. The category for least enjoyed film is a bit difficult. I try to see the good and creativity in every film. Fuck these movies, they're shit, lifeless cash grabs that add nothing to anything. They take pre-existing elements and shit all over them. I hate you, and I am now in physical pain as a direct result. The category for most enjoyed film is pretty straightforward. They're not the films that I think are the best in quality, but the ones that I find unbelievable enjoyment from. The first time watching Perks of Being a Wildflower, I was speechless. The complexity of high school and fitting in is scary. Emma Watson is perfect, just like always. Ezra Miller was in this before all the other stuff. The casting is amazing. The story is unlike anything I've ever seen. This is the only reason I watched Rocky Horror. The music is amazing. I have nothing but positive things to say about this film. <laughs> We have gotten so many multiverse movies, it's exhausting. When hearing that the little boy from the Goonies was going to come back to be in another film, I was just about to lose my mind. However, when hearing it was a multiverse film, a little part of me was disappointed. Haven't we seen enough about this? It's exhausting. How is this multiverse going to stand out, especially without known IP characters? Everything Everywhere All at Once is a breath of fresh air. I really wish I could write this huge review breaking down everything I love about it, but I just don't see the point. Go watch this film if you haven't already. And the winner for the film that I enjoyed watching the most in 2022, for the second year in a row, I mean, what else did you think it would be?